What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to calibrate the MPU 9250 accelerometer with your Raspberry Pi and Python. This video is an extension of a previous video where I showed you how to get set up to start getting values from this device in Python using the Raspberry Pi. So if you haven't already, please be sure to go watch that video because we are building off the code we went over in that video. And this video instead, as we mentioned, we'll be doing a simple calibration process where I will show you how to get more accurate representations of your gyroscopic and linear acceleration values from your device using some simple calibration techniques in Python. And I'll be walking you through step-by-step -step from the conceptual level to the code level of how to do this. So enough being said, I do not want to waste any of your time. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we just want to work off the script we did in part one. You can see I just switched IDEs. I'm using Visual Studio Code as opposed to Thani. However, it's fine. You can continue using Thani. I just switched to Visual Studio Code. It's the same code, but this is just personal preference. So the first thing we want to do actually is we just want to calibrate the gyro, that is the angular acceleration values from the device. That's because it is just easier conceptually and on a code level to start with first. So let's go ahead and start with that. And let's first go ahead and comment the other values that we do not care about right now. That is the linear acceleration and the magnetometer. And we're just going to do that, okay? So by calibrating this, what we want to do is first of all, understand like why we're calibrating it. So I mentioned this briefly in part one. So what's going on is actually my device is not moving right now. So the real values of the angular acceleration of this device should all be zero. And in all three degrees of freedom, that is the G, X, G, Y, and G, Z. However, we'll realize when we go ahead and run this code, we'll realize that's not the case. So if we go ahead and run this, we see right away that our values are offset from zero to, to some degree. Maybe yours a little more, maybe yours a little less, but you will realize it's a little bit significant, especially with these cheaper accelerometers. So what we want to do is we want to find a value that we can subtract from these measured values to get closer to the real value of measured gyroscopic acceleration. And that is the whole premise of really doing any calibration process, whether it's a magnetometer calibration, linear accelerometer calibration. We're just trying to find some value or some means to get closer to the real value in nature of the device, because a lot of these devices are manufactured or all these devices are manufactured with some defect, no matter how perfect the accelerometer is, some, the more expensive ones have a really small defect, but we could see that this defect here or this inherent bias of the device is relatively large. And so we want to attempt to minimize that. So we're just going to do a very simple process where we're just going to allow this thing to measure a bunch of values in a resting state, okay? We're going to take the average of those values and that average will be the offset that we're going to subtract from the measured value. So that's all we're going to do. So in order to do that, we can just go ahead and pause this code. And we are just going to introduce a very simple function that allows us to calculate these values. And I'll walk you through this function very quickly. And this function also uses the NumPy library. So you could just import NumPy as NP. This just allows us to do some very simple matrix operations, really popular library for these sort of things. And if you haven't, you can just go ahead and pip install NumPy, okay? I already did it, I'm not going to run this command, but you could just go ahead and run that command. And so what's going on in this very simple function is what we're doing is we're telling the user, please keep the sensor stationary because that's really important. And we're just going to record a thousand values. You can change this value, the more higher it is, or the higher it is, it will be more accurate offset that you'll calculate it, but a thousand is good enough. And so you'll just record a thousand values number of sample values, and it'll just take the average of that value. And that average is going to be the offset in each degree of freedom. So the GX offsets, the GY offsets, and the GZ offsets. So you calculate three offsets. Each axis should have a different offsets. And once you have those offsets, what you're going to do is you're going to utilize those offsets and subtract them from the measured value to get the offset value, or that is the calibrated value from the gyroscope and that will be more accurate than the initial value. So we could just go ahead and call this function after we configure the MPU. So we get those three offsets. So this function does take a little bit to run, so just give it a few seconds. And then once we have that offset, we could just go ahead and subtract it from the measured value. So this is just the raw measured value. We're going to subtract each offset from its corresponding uh, degree of freedom. So GX, GY, GZ. 
and we are just going to print gyroscope calibrated, okay? So we'll call it calibrated after we do that. And just to show you how that is working, we'll print the uncalibrated one before we subtract the offsets. So we'll call it uncalibrated. And that's really all we're doing. So we're just taking a bunch of values, calculating the average in a resting state, and that is the offset we're going to use as long as our function is running or as long as our device is running. And if you do power off and on your device, it is good practice to recalibrate and call this function. However, typically the offset shouldn't change from time to time. However, over time, let's say a week from now, you will maybe see that your offset has changed. So we can go ahead and run this code, okay? If we did everything correctly, so be sure not to move your device. So that's what we're doing here. It's just on my table. And then it should take a few seconds. Of course, the longer intervals you have, the longer measures. Okay, so what we have here, so we can just scroll up so it stops going down. We'll see right away what is going on. So let me just zoom in just to show you guys. So it calculated these offsets. So it said the offset of GX is about 2.6, GY 0.9, and GZ 0 0.05, so GZ pretty good. And what we're seeing here is that first it prints the uncalibrated value, okay? So this is far from zero. And simply what the, the code does is it takes the offset we calculated on each interval, or on each reading now going forward, and it just subtracts the offset. So we could see that it subtracted the 2.59 from the 2.53 for the GX, and the same for each corresponding axis respectively. And we'll see right away that it is closer to zero. So that means our simple calibration process is working. And we'll see that for all the measured values that in this resting state, that it does get closer to zero. And of course, when the device is moving, of course, that offset does apply and it does increase accuracy for this device when it starts moving. So that is pretty cool. You could see also that it's not exactly zero. So it's not a perfect calibration process. Once again, there are much more sophisticated calibration techniques that we're not going to discuss in this tutorial series. If you are interested in more techniques, I'll be happy to do a video, but this is typically good enough for our DIY practices. And that's pretty much it for the gyro calibration process. Really simple, just took an average and we subtracted it from the device and we're able to use this value as long as the device is plugged in. And once again, be sure to recalibrate every once in a while to be sure that you have uh, the most up-to-date offset for your device. Okay, so now that we calibrated the gyro and we know how to do that, now we just want to switch to calibrating the, the linear acceleration values, that is X, Y, and Z. So it's slightly more complicated and hopefully I can walk you through it enough for you to get an understanding of exactly what we want to do and how to do it. So first let's just go ahead and comment all the gyro stuff just so we could focus on the linear acceleration calibration. Okay, so we could just do this. And of course, you could reintroduce that later to calibrate both the linear acceleration and the gyro at the same time. And we just want to go ahead and uncalibrate the linear acceleration readings, and we just want to print them on the screen. And so pretty much the difference between linear acceleration and a resting state and gyro in a resting state is that we know in a resting state that all of the gyroscopic values should be zero because there's no rotation going on. However, in a resting state, what's going on is that we still have the force of gravity. So depending on which axis is oriented against gravity, that axis should actually measure one G of acceleration based on the accelerometer design. So that'll make a little more sense in this diagram, okay? So in a resting state, we can see if we have the X axis oriented against gravity with this MPU-9250, we should get a measured value of one G in the code, which is roughly equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And the other values, uh, X or Y and Z should be zero and zero because they are per perpendicular to this force of gravity. And we know there's no other force actively acting on the MPU-9250. And so if we go ahead and flip this over and point Y against gravity, and we just hold the accelerometer as it is, we'll know that X will go to zero, Z will remain zero. However, Y will register one G. And then if we orient our accelerometer flat on a surface, we should get Z would be equal to one G in that case, okay? So what we're going to do is we know that the real value in those three states for each corresponding axis should be one G. However, when we go to measure it, we'll get something slightly different from one G. And we really would just want to calculate the offsets from that one value for each axis. So we'll be doing three separate cal calibrations, one for each axis, we'll, where we'll be taking a bunch of measurements, a thousand measurements for each axis, 
taking the average and then subtracting the difference from 1G. And that difference we calculate is going to be the offset value we are going to use to bring our value closer to the real value of the acceleration. So I hope that makes sense. Really, as opposed to calibrating against zero, we're just calibrating against one in this case because the, the forces on our device in a resting state are different in the linear case as opposed to the gyroscopic case. Okay, so going back to the code, just to show you what I mean by that, we're just gonna go ahead and run this without any calibration. So let's go ahead and run the code and we'll start getting acceleration values. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to orient my device like this, okay? So imagine this is the table I'm working on. My device is oriented exactly like this where X is upward against gravity. And so what we'll see right now is that that X value is relatively one, which is as expected, but we see that there's some bias here. So that's the bias we want to correct for. So we want to get as close to one as possible in that case. We're going to do a single point calibration as we did with the gyro. Once again, just trying to get closer to that one as opposed to zero in the gyroscopic case. And next thing I want to show you is if we flip it like this, okay, so I'm going to flip it like that. So imagine your Y is pointed upwards on the table. So what's going to happen relatively is that that Y should register roughly one and the other value should be zero. So we'll calibrate that Y in that orientation. So we see that's exactly the case. And finally, I can't really show you on the screen because it's not three dimensional. What we could do is we could just lay our accelerometer flat on the table upwards and that Z should be relatively one. And so if we go back to the code, we'll see that it's, so the Z needs a lot of calibration. We'll see it's about 0.8. So we, we have to calculate that offset uh, from the difference to one on average to get a more accurate representation of the linear acceleration Z. So that's the whole premise of what we're going to do. And now we're just going to introduce a helper function. I'll be walking you through that and explaining what we'll be doing in that helper function to allow us to do this. Okay, so now that we have the conceptual parts of the calibration understood. Now we just want to implement that. So we're just going to introduce this helper function as we did before, that'll pretty much do all of the heavy lifting for us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this helper function that I wrote earlier on the side here. And it's just called calibrate Excel. And one thing we want to right away is switch this because that was a slight bug I had. So we want to subtract from one. And so pretty much what we're doing in this calibrate Excel function is it's going to do three separate calibrations and it's going to wait for your input to actually orient that axis against gravity. So first it's going to loop through the first axis X and it's going to say orient the sensor so the X is against gravity. So we should just point the sensor like this in that case, upwards against gravity on the table. So just try to hold it as steady as possible. Or if you have a sensor block that can hold it for you, that's optimal. And then once it's done calibrating that, it's going to ask you to calibrate the Y. So it's going to wait until you're ready and then you can click enter. And then you can just point the Y against gravity, hold that as steady as possible, that's really important. And finally, it's going to ask you for the Z. So we just wanna put the Z axis upward against gravity. So that means the accelerometer is flat on the table and we just want to wait for it to calculate and spit out that offset, okay? So really similar to the, the GX, GY, GZ offset, except we have to do this three times and we have to calibrate against one in this case and we have to have some user input. So we actually have to click enter on the keyboard for this thing to proceed. So once we have that, we just want to go ahead and call this function, okay? So we just call this function down here, same thing. We just calculate it and call it and produce those static values. And once we have those values, we just want to subtract them out, okay? So we just wanna go down here and subtract those values. This should be subtract, subtract and subtract. And we just want to print the accelerometer calibrated. And then finally, before that, we want to print the uncalibrated just to show you the difference and that it is working. So we could just do this and say uncalibrated, okay? So let's go ahead and now that we have all that set up, everything looks good. We could just go ahead and run this code. So let's go ahead and go up on the keyboard here and type Python 3, okay? So it's asking me to point the X upwards against gravity. So I'm just going to hold it as steady as possible on my table. Once again, not necessarily good practice to hold it with your hand, but for the sake of this video, it should be fine. Really calibration blocks are optimal. So I'm just holding it like this and I'm going to click enter when ready. Awesome. So I give that a few moments there. It's going to take a thousand samples. And once again, you can increase the number of samples if you'd like. 
it's not going to make that big of a difference really for this type of calibration process. Okay, so it calculated the X offset. Now let's flip and do the Y against gravity. And once we're ready, click enter. So I'm going to click enter now. Okay, same thing. There should be a small offset for the Y as we saw with the real values. We're almost done here, guys. And finally, we're going to do the Z. So Z is just this thing's laying flat on the table and the Z is pointed upwards against gravity. Okay, so this thing is just flat on the table. I'm just holding it in that orientation and we're going to click enter. The Z should be a little more sig significant as we saw. It was registering 0.8 when it should have been 0.1. So we should get a larger offset here. Okay. So now we calculate all the offsets, so it looks good so far. So now we can zoom in on these values to make sure everything makes sense. So we have the offsets. So let me just go ahead and zoom into this code and show you that everything is making sense. So as we mentioned, let's say the x-axis is pointed upwards against gravity. It should be that the it, it should register closer to 1G now after we calibrate it. So let's go ahead and hold it against gravity, that x-axis. And we can see right away that it is almost 1G as opposed to that point. 0 0.06 offset, now it's relatively 0 0.01 difference. So we can see that we calibrated relatively successfully there and really, really close to that 1G level. I'm holding it against gravity. Same thing for the Y, we can go ahead and flip it. And we could see that the uncalibrated value is much farther from that 1G real value that it should be. In this case, really, really small error now after we calculated the offset. And you'll see the same thing for the Z value, which was much more significant. It's, it was 0.8 without the calibration value. Now, after, calibra after calibrating, we could see that it is almost 1. It is the most inaccurate because it does have the largest error. However, we were able to correct that to a large degree with this simple calibration process. So it looks like everything worked out successfully. So there you have it, guys. We just went over probably the simplest calibration process you can do for your MPU 9250 to get more accurate representations of your accelerometer values. I hope you guys got it working and were able to calibrate your accelerometer properly in Python. If you did, please consider a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And even better, consider donating to the channel in the Buy Me Coffee link down below. Also, if you are having issues or questions with this calibration process, let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll try my best to get back to you in due time. That is all for today video let me know what you want to see in the next video maybe we'll work through calibrating the magnetometer or doing more uh, significant and powerful techniques to actually calibrate this thing more robustly using other filtering techniques stay tuned guys thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video